Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for joining our show today. Today, I have the opportunity to speak with a good friend of mine and colleague, Pranav Kandala. He's a cloud solutions architect here at Hughes. The cloud has become a dominant solution that our enterprise market and enterprise customers have rapidly embraced. And we're going to be talking today about some of uh, how to navigate all that complexity. Pranav, welcome to our show. Well, could you talk us a little bit about what your role is at Hughes and how you got started in the cloud? Hi, Tim. Thank you for having me. Uh, I am a solutions architect for the North American division for Hughes. Uh, my responsibilities include evaluating an organization's business needs and determine how Hughes can support those uh, needs, leveraging our expertise in networking, connectivity, and infrastructure. Uh, in addition, I lead brainstorming sessions to develop potential solutions to meet business needs and solve their problems uh, with all the solutions which we have to offer. Uh, how did I get started with cloud? Well, uh, it has been a very organic growth into, into the cloud. Like many organizations, we here at Hughes were also looking at an alternative to uh, complement our on-prem services. Uh, we needed a cost-effective solution to support large amounts of data and support bursty compute. Uh, one such project which uh, we were working on, Tim, you are aware, is our AI ops project where uh, we had tons of data coming in and we needed a more powerful compute which can easily scale up, scale down. So clearly cloud stood out to us and we started uh, our cloud migration journey many years ago. Uh, during the process, uh, we learned a lot about best practices, cloud security and connectivity. Uh, and uh, eventually we were able to build those expertise in-house on how to migrate applications to the cloud and how to provide best connectivity between a distributed enterprise and uh, our uh, cloud deployments. Uh, after we finish all this migration and after we have uh, started offering our AOP service, it so happened that uh, one of our customers have uh, reached out to us and mentioned that, hey, they're, we are struggling with cloud migration and connectivity. Uh, we have decided to go hybrid cloud and we are having a lot of challenges. Uh, taking a quick look at that, uh, we were like, hey, we, we did something similar in, in our network and we can definitely do it for you folks. And uh, this particular customer was a uh, huge managed customer and we have recently deployed SD-WAN for them. Uh, looking at their requirements, looking at their business needs and connectivity requirements, we were able to not just come up with a cloud uh, migration strategy and provide them connectivity, but leveraging our DevOps we were able to even deploy it in less than 48 hours. And uh, that's how it started. So we deployed them, they were happy customers. And uh, after that, everything was history. Interesting, it started with SD-WAN and then moved into the cloud. You know, when we think about cloud architectures, what's important for, or what, what do customers need to understand when it comes to cloud architecture design? Sure. Uh, depending on whether you are still exploring cloud computing or have a form of hybrid cloud deployment or have a much more advanced multi-cloud deployment, the most important thing about cloud architecture is that you need the cloud uh, to be reliable, secured, high-performing, and cost-effective. If you're just starting off with cloud migration, having a good architecture, uh, good architecture and finding the right talent is critical and can save you a lot of money in the long run. Uh, establishing best practices for cloud across the company and managing budgets, cost estimates, and operation at scale is critical. If you're unable to manage all this uh, in the right format, then you're, you're setting yourself up for a cloud migration failure. Uh, when it comes to uh, most common cloud architect. There are many different cloud architectures available for our end, uh, end customers. Uh, some of the most common ones which we come across is the hybrid cloud. A hybrid cloud is when you have both on-prem and cloud presence. Uh, this is very typical when a large enterprise has decided to uh, move applications into the cloud because of all the advantages they get there, and but still has to support certain legacy applications on-prem or using on-prem as a disaster recovery. So there, that is when your hybrid cloud comes in. The tricky part with hybrid cloud is you, in a distributed enterprise is connectivity. So now you have your, uh, your branches, your stores, your uh, satellite offices, not just talk to one on-prem locations, but an on-prem location as well as a cloud network. 
It gets even more trickier when you're still in the migration process and you're migrating applications from on-prem to cloud and your end satellite uh, locations should have the ability to figure out where to send traffic for different applications. So that is where the hybrid cloud comes in. It's very common uh, because a lot of enterprises uh, have already started investing in cloud and are moving towards the cloud. That's why we see a lot of hybrid cloud. On the other end of the spectrum is the pure cloud play. Many uh, enterprises who have established themselves in last five to eight years have not invested in on-prem, but have been purely on cloud. Uh, they come with their own different set of challenges. When you have pure cloud play, it is critical to have a backup solution or to have a disaster recovery solution. So how is that going to play? Are you going to be in a single region or are you going to be in a multi-region? So depending on all those, the cloud connectivity and the cloud disaster recovery becomes an interesting challenge to solve. Another very common deployment which we see is multi-cloud deployment. This is very common among really large customers who have multiple verticals and each vertical has invested in, uh, uh, in their own cloud. It could be a different cloud provider altogether or a different set of tools to manage the same cloud. Or uh, this is a very common case where uh, there's been a merger, a company bought out some uh, other subsidiaries and they have their own different cloud strategies and uh, they're well advanced into a, invested into a different cloud providers. In that case, uh, simplifying cloud management and simplifying getting, getting uh, providing the same connectivity across the table becomes a challenge. And that's where your multi-cloud deployments come into picture. Another trend we have seen there is a lot of large enterprises have uh, been investing in going multi-cloud to prevent uh, dependencies on a single cloud on uh, avoid network outages. Another very simple uh, cloud strategy has been SaaS. We see this mostly among small and medium enterprises where uh, they just don't want to have the headache of maintaining cloud infrastructure and having this massive teams to uh, operate all the system. They want a lean IT team, uh, which can deliver what they're doing, uh, what, what they require. So for those, SaaS has become the go-to uh, go to model for that. So they only consume software as a service. They don't need to worry about infrastructure. They don't really need to worry about security because most SaaS providers provide security natively. Uh, the challenge which they face is user role management and optimization for these applications. How can they do get an optimized on-ramp to the SaaS applications. So uh, th this is very, and we also see mixture of all this in and out. And at a high level, these are the various cloud options you have to them, but yeah, uh, every cloud provider uh, has their own, comes with their own challenges and every enterprise has their own, uh, their own challenges when it comes to cloud migration. So, wow, Bernard, you've got the hybrid cloud, you have the pure cloud, you have the uh, uh, multi-cloud, and then you have the SaaS applications. And then across all these different cloud architectures, you have these issues of connectivity, availability, and management, and, and the like. Can you offer some solutions? Uh, what, what, how do you solve these kinds of problems? So uh, lack of knowledge is one of the biggest challenge when it comes to uh, cloud migration, right? Uh, when a customer, um, most customers, what we see, they do not have the right talent in-house available to support this cloud migration journey. There's a lot of demand for cloud architectures and finding talent in this market is a challenge of its own. Uh, another big challenge here is visibility, right? Uh, when it comes to visibility, uh, moving workloads from your on-prem to cloud and expecting your whatever visibility tools you're using for on-prem to work on the cloud may not work. Uh, cloud providers do not grant customers direct access to shared infrastructure, and you need a traditional monitoring infra your traditional monitoring infrastructure will not be supported in your cloud. Most likely, will not be supported in your cloud. Uh, cloud providers provide log files that provide information about activity in the cloud, but they don't really provide about security. They don't really provide about performance of the cloud. So, investing in a good visibility tool is critical when it comes to your cloud migration. Uh, data protection and cloud security is also a big, big challenge. When it comes to securing your cloud, it is important to understand the subtle differences between your on-prem and cloud security. You cannot have the same strategy for your on-prem security applied to your cloud security. You need to treat them both entities separately and you need to treat them uh, the right way. 
uh, many have this, uh, uh, there's a myth going around saying that cloud is really secured and cloud will uh, take away your security challenges and all that. That's not true. Cloud, public, especially when it comes to public cloud, it's a shared responsibility. A cloud provider has a responsibility for securing the infrastructure, but the onus of securing your applications and the traffic which goes through uh, the public cloud lies uh, with the customer and they need to really understand this and the teams need to work towards it and clearly demarking what is their responsibility and what are they responsible for securing when uh, for a cloud application uh, another uh, biggest challenge which we see is plain simple connectivity into cloud though it's on public internet uh, it is getting a secured connectivity into public cloud can be challenging and can be resource consuming so having a good uh, solution, a good connectivity solution, either you're leveraging uh, SD-WAN or sas is important when it comes to connecting to the cloud. Pranav, as we wrap up here, what advice would you give to executives who are just beginning their cloud journey? It is critical to understand your responsibilities on the security side of things. So having a good partner uh, to help you understand those differences, hey, hey customer, you should be responsible for these things and uh, these things will be responsible for the cloud provider is critical. Second thing is uh, getting things out there, uh, getting to understand uh, what is the best strategy or best practices uh, while deploying a cloud application. There are many ways you can deploy in the cloud, but there are very few best practices to deploy the right way in the cloud, which makes it uh, operationally scalable. So keeping that in mind, you, that comes only with practice, that only comes with a lot of training. So it's important to focus on uh, your team's training and certifications. There are a lot of really good certifications available from various cloud providers on how to migrate to cloud, or how, what are the best practices out in cloud. So training uh, should be a main focus or your step one when it comes to your cloud migration strategy. Second one is to embrace automation. Uh, automation is critical when it comes to cloud migration. Uh, either, if, if you look at a lot of cloud providers, they support automation at a very granular level. Automation does not just reduce workloads uh, for your operations team, but also improve security. And it's very interesting. Automation and security don't really go uh, together in many cases, but when it comes to the cloud, they actually go pretty well together. When there is a particular uh, risk or a particular security event happens in your network, we should use automation to mitigate it right away. You should not wait for your security team to go in and figure out what the event is and go and mitigate it. Having that automated risk assessment and automated uh, mitigation strategy will uh, reduce a lot of challenges which cloud faces or a lot of challenges of lack of visibility into the cloud. Another very common uh, simple solution out there is standardizing management and automation. Having a good uh, understanding of all, all your verticals and the requirements and standardizing the tools across all your verticals is critical when you go to a cloud, uh, when you migrate your application to the cloud. Uh, if your marketing team is using a different set of tools, your development team is using diff a different set of tools and your store operations is using a different set of tools, it becomes a nightmare to manage all these different tools and each tool having their own different automation ways. Having a standardization across the board reduces the amount of effort needed to integrate everything together and have uh, a single management plan to understand what is happening in different verticals. Another critical thing or another uh, good trend which I'm seeing in this cloud migration is use of AI and ML. Uh, we at Hughes have our own AOPS engine where we process terabytes and terabytes of data per month just to analyze and uh, see the data. For a normal human to do it, it's impossible. No human can do it. And because of lack of your packet level information in cloud, you can leverage logs and you can leverage your AI and machine learning to figure out anomalies in your network, to figure out anomalies in your uh, application behavior to see what is happening and mitigate uh, disasters before they even happen or uh, see security events or uh, probable security threats even before they happen through the machine learning. So investing in good machine learning, having automation at the core 
training your teams the right way can get you uh, much further away or much further along your cloud migration. For now, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us. You've helped us kind of understand the complexities of all the different types of cloud architectures, some of the common challenges in terms of uh, navigating availability, visibility into the cloud. Uh, the, really appreciate the insights into cybersecurity concerns and the like, and also the role of AI ops to kind of simplify and improve our, our, our postures uh, in, in the cloud as it, as it relates to uh, enterprises being able to operationalize and get the business value of the cloud. Today, I thank you everybody for joining our conversation. I've been speaking with Pranav Kandala, Solutions Architect here at Hughes. Thank you, Jim.